Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's mid-April 2021, we've had the first implementation of the AT Blur targeting pod in the FA18C Hornet. Most of the functionality is in there, so we're going to do a tutorial now. Extra functionality will be added in the coming months, and we'll cover that too. First of all, controls. To be able to use the T-Pod, we need to assign TDC to the particular screen. So, if we're using it in the right screen, sensor control switch right. Once we have assigned TDC to the right screen, SCS right again will cycle between INR, Scene and Auto modes. Target designator control TDC left, right, up and down will slew the T-Pod in those directions or you can use an axis. TDC depress will either create a target point and or toggle INR mode depending on the situation. Nose wheel steering single press will undesignate a current target. A double press will toggle between snow plow and velocity vector slave. Radar elevation up or down will zoom in or out. Trigger second detent will fire laser. Raid short press will cycle the field of views. RAID long press will cycle TV or IR modes. At the time of making this, the AT flare can only go on one station, that is station four. It's suggested that you keep pylon three empty in this case to give you a better field of view, but it's not essential. When rearming is complete, we need to power the flare up. You'd often do this in the air, but for this tutorial, we'll do it on the ground. Right console, standby, on. It takes 1 minute and 40 seconds to fully power up. If we want to see that process then we can go here, FLIR. We now wait 1 minute and 40 seconds. It's now warmed up. The screen is blank because as standard the teapot is stowed for transit. If we want to actually use it we need to unstow it. We can do that by setting the teapot to either two positions. One, vertical velocity slave or two, snow plow. We can cycle between those two modes by either pressing this OSB here, that's vertical velocity slave, that's snow plow, or if we were to turn it off or back to standby, turn it on again so it's stowed itself now, we can double press nose wheel steering to cycle between the two. So with our TDC assigned to this screen here, via SCS right, shown by the diamond, double press nose wheel steer, vertical velocity slave, Snowplow, and you can happily leave the teapot in either of those two modes. Teapot is now ready for use. Let's take off. We're now in the air. The teapot is as we left it. The targets are ahead of us at the threshold of a one way there to keep everything simple. We're going to use this teapot properly. Then let's select air to ground mode. As well as that, we're going to play with a laser. So, laser designator and ranger arm. When we select air to ground mode, we default on the right screen to the air to ground radar. So, let's go back to tactical menu, blur. Note also that the TDC assignment diamond is gone. We need that back if we're going to use the T-Bot. So in this case, SCS right. We're going to split looking at these functions into four categories. One, initial pointing. How do we get the T-Pod pointing roughly in the right direction of the bad guys to begin with? Two, overall symbology. Three, we're going to look at the different track modes and how to slew the T-Pod around. And four, we'll look at the laser. First, how do we get the teapot pointing in the rough direction of the bad guys? We have two methods. Firstly, and this is really easy, if you have a waypoint at or near the bad guys, we can waypoint designate. So, down to our HSI here, select the waypoint in question, waypoint designate, that has done the following. It's pointed the teapot towards the waypoint, which just happens to be near the bad guys. It's also created a target point, which we know because we've got 7.7 .7 miles to target and we've got a target diamond in the HUD and the mileage there as well. Now I'm going to undesignate and put the T-Bob back into its default position, so nose will steering to get rid of that target. I'm going to press vertical velocity slave and again it's now in snowplow mode. Snowplow mode by the way just means it's essentially pointed towards the front ahead of us here and slightly down. So the second method is going to be vertical velocity slave. Press it there to box it. This means that the T-Pod always points to our vertical velocity vector, which is shown by that circle there. So all I've got to do now is unpause, put the circle roughly on the target, which I know is at the end of the runway. And when it's there, and I can see we're roughly in position, I will press TDC depress there. 
what that's done is when I press TDC depress is to again create a target point you can see 5.8 miles and you can see our diamond there and it's locked the teapot into that position it's also put us in our first teapot mode which is INR which we'll come back to later OPR the teapot is operational field of view we have three field of views we can cycle between medium field of view narrow field of view and wide field of view wide field of view has one zoom level medium and narrow field of view have two zoom levels and you can change those zoom levels with the OSBs here or with the controls we saw earlier main mode do we want it in IR mode like we've got here or TV mode we're gonna try in IR mode azimuth and elevation offset angles so this is currently saying that if I were to slew here the teapot is pointing five degrees left of where our aircraft is pointing or three degrees right in terms of elevation it's 12 degrees down from the bore site of the aircraft or 15 degrees down similar to that is the situation the awareness cube this guy here that little diamond look what happens if I move the teapot around it's telling us where the teapot is pointing in relation to our aircraft in a 3d scope so if it's up here it's pointing ahead of us there to the left there behind there to the right and if it's in the middle it's pointing directly down and anywhere in between very important next laser status the laser is currently armed next reticle symbology do we want it showing or not showing next is our TDC assignment diamond if TDC is assigned to the screen which we need to do if we want to use it the diamonds there next is our coordinates these coordinates show the lap long elevation in feet above mean sea level and the MGRS grid coordinates of where the teapot is currently pointing to on the terrain next trigger filter if we want the laser to operate automatically depending on the type of weapon that we're using we leave the trigger filter unboxed if we want to use the laser manually which we'll do later we'll have it boxed here is the distance to the target assuming we have a target designated here are the PRF laser codes for the laser spot track and the laser designator ranger we'll come back to those later next setup coordinate type here we can filter different parts of this coordinate system on or off I safe line in it line and cal nothing functional here at the moment we get a grayscale here at the bottom in setup for screen calibration get out of setup next we have a declutter so we'll remove some of the symbology give us a better view next our laser spot track we're going to cover that in a separate video but you can function or start the laser spot search slash track by pressing that button there and it will search for the current LST PRF you've got there next our barometric altitude a MSL in feet our current mark our current calibrated airspeed in knots when I have IR mode selected like I do as default ALG will be boxed that's automatic level and gain and most of the time you'll have that on if you wanted to configure them manually you could unbox it and we can now change the level which is 3 and the gain which is 3 by clicking there and you can see that we can now toggle these up and down if you want but I'm not going to do that I'm going to put it back to automatic we can inverse the IR polarity currently we're on white hot so hot things show as white and vice versa or we can change it the other way around automatic focus is not modeled in the sim zoom we've already looked at next is our northing line this shows where magnetic north is from the position where the teapot is looking so from this position here on the ground north would be that direction very important for your situation awareness so if I wanted to say there's a bad guy to the east by 100 feet you know that's how that would work next we move into the center here lots of symbologies velocity vector there we've got a diamond here which is showing a waypoint waypoint one we've got our target designation diamond here we've got our yardstick marker here this would be useful for instance if I wanted to measure uh, a particular building then this is saying at this zoom level 
that far across is 48 meters so I could say that building there is I don't know you know 30 meters or something like that these ticks here 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 show the outer extent of the next smallest field of view I mean medium field of view so this shows where narrow field of view would be extended to this bracket here and this bracket here please ignore I put them on by accident when I was uh, looking through the symbologies next we're gonna look at the four different reticle states the two different track types and the symbology involved so there are four different reticle states INR which is inertial rate undesignated INR designated and then two track modes scene and auto scene is the same or similar to area track that we would have in a lightning pod auto is the same or similar to what we would have as point track in a lightning pod we're currently in scene mode i didn't mean to do that to get out of scene mode i am going to press because the screen i'm using is on the right scs right once that toggles me through to auto i'm going to press it again it toggles me through to inr we are currently in inertial rate designated mode it's designated because we've got a diamond because we've got a target what if i undesignate nose wheel steering once big crosshair this shows that we're in inertial reference undesignated what if i make a target with tdcd press we're in inr designated with either of those inr modes we can slew the teapot around make sure we've got our tdc diamond assigned and slew it around Simple as that, not much else to say. You're gonna slew it, you're gonna put it on the target, and boom. Now let's move to the tracks. From INR, press SCS right. We get our first track, a scene track. That is tracking the piece of terrain where the teapot is pointing. We would use that for weapons deployment on either a static vehicle or static infrastructure, building, whatever. When we're in scene track mode, we can still slew. If you see because you might want to make some minor adjustments and I want to kill that tank as well so I go back to TV go to narrow field of view I'm gonna get right there if I'm gonna use area track to hit a vehicle make sure you aim at the base of the vehicle remember it's tracking the terrain that the teapot's pointing out not the vehicle now let's try auto mode SCS right again we're now in auto mode auto mode tracks the actual vehicle not the piece of terrain behind it it's picked up that vehicle it's tracking it the good thing about auto is it can be also be used to track a moving target so let's go and try that i'm going to move from auto back to inr with scs right scs right will cycle through the different modes i'm going to go and find this guy aha right let's, let's usually do this ir with ir mode but let's try tv mode let's move on to him here i'm going to cycle to auto mode scs right and we picked him up and we can now dro go and drop a laser guided bomb or a maverick or whatever on that target we're not going to cover weapons in this video because they're fully covered in the weapons tutorials that we do in relation with the teapot as well now the important thing about auto mode is we can no longer slew the teapot look i'm banging the buttons up down left and right i can't slew them it's just how auto works but there is a way of working around that and to show you that i'm just going to get off of the moving target simply because he's going to uh, cause some complications so we're going to put a point track on this guy here sorry auto track i'm so used to lightning pod i keep saying point track auto you know what i mean try and slew i can't slew but i can override that with a press of tdc depress and look i get this little crosshair i can now move on to something else oh hey i like that tank there instead scs right and it's moved the t pod to that point there and we've reverted back to inertial rates designated finally let's go to laser right console switch is turned on as we saw earlier first we can change the prf the pulse repetition frequencies of these co of these lasers here currently both 1688 i go to ufc here i go to the designating laser here i want to change it to 1588 there or the laser spot search the laser spot track i want that to 188 1588 as well enter you can see they both change there if I want to laze manually I'll box the trigger there I will press and hold trigger second detent and you can see when I push and hold that LTDR is flashing laser designator ranger and you can see also this designating diamond also flashes press and hold again 
that is how I can manually fire the laser and I want to do that for instance if I was buddy lasing and I want a full manual control of the laser. That is the AT FLIR April 2021. I hope that was useful and see you later.